Well, good morning, everyone. I guess a soon to be good afternoon. I'm Patricia Krausman. I am a center director with the Kentucky Small Business Development Center, and I am in uh, the Elizabethtown office. And I'm going to share a little more with you later today about the KSBBC and some of the things that we offer. Um, we're here today because the um, Abound Credit Union and the KSBBC have partnered for several years now to bring a dynamic program to this area. And one of our key goals was to ensure that people have re understand resources, that they have availability to connect with resources and that they hear from community leaders. And uh, another part of our program today is that we are celebrating veteran businesses. You know, one of the key things with any small business right now is the uh, challenges that are being faced with the pandemic and COVID-19, but veteran-owned businesses as well um, are certainly impacted. So we will talk a little bit about that as well today. But our goal for today is we want a day of celebration and education. So this is for future and existing veteran business owners. Um, a little bit about veteran-owned businesses. They're actually a very crucial part of our nation's economy. 99.9% .9 of all veteran-owned businesses are small business by federal government standards. They employ more than 5 million people throughout the country and account for annual payrolls of $195 billion. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more uh, later in the program about what that looks like here in Kentucky as well. But the overall key is that veteran-owned businesses are, are certainly a big part of our economy and the vitality that we experience here in this area particularly. So our event today, as I said, is an annual event that we uh, provide with um, a bound credit union. And we have changed it up a little bit. You know, as uh, many of you have been to our program before, we always held this as a live event and it was a very dynamic day. It was a half day program. And we were able to not only um, entertain our speakers or uh, learn more about uh, our excuse me, to educate our, our audience, but we were also able to have networking uh, sessions and that was a very important and well um, uh, defined part of the program. Today, of course, we're uh, virtual. This is a something that's new to us. So let's, uh, if there are a few little glitches, we certainly hope not, but as with everyone, we are taking this opportunity to learn more about getting information out and sharing that. We also have a streamlined event. Usually our program is three hours today, uh, half a day typically. Today we have a shorter program, but that does not mean that we're not bringing the same level and quality of education and information for you as well. Um, you know, given the COVID-19 pandemic, small business resource partners like the SBD Um, I get it. <laughs> you know, we all, we're all there and we're all in this together. Um, however, I, I do know that the key to sustainability is understanding and acknowledging this uncertainty, but identifying things that you can control or that you can change and adapt. And so we want to assure you that that's our intent and our goal today. Um, now we're going to talk, uh, I'm going to go over our agenda with you just to give you an idea of what we have in store for us today. Uh, with that, um, I know that, um, let me grab my agenda really quickly. I think Ryan's gonna put that on the screen for us. Ryan is our behind the scenes uh, wizard that is helping us <laughs> with our program today. Um, we are first gonna uh, start with Ray Springsteen, who's with the 
um, a bound credit union and hear a little bit about him and he's going to welcome us and give us an introduction of our guest speaker our special guest speaker which is um, Brett Guthrie and Brian uh, Smith from his office uh, we will then hear from Jim Iacocca who is the uh, president and CEO of the Knox Regional I always say that wrong Ray <laughs> I'll get that in just a moment but we, uh, we are going to hear from Jim as well. And then Trace Chesser will be joining us. Trace is our keynote speaker today. And Trace is the uh, CEO and president of USA Cares. And he has a very uh, compelling story to share. And we'll talk about his experiences. Uh, Chuck Eads is with us to share information about our uh, financing options and things that are available to small businesses in that arena. That's certainly on all of our minds today. And then I will be uh, providing a program, as always, that introduces some resource partners and talks a little more about the things that are available to ensure that you're aware of the services of the SBA, the SBA resource partners, the KSBDC, and others. And so we will, um, we will get more into some of those programs and the things that are available at that time. And um, then that should conclude our program and our uh, formal part of the program. Becky Yates will join us to talk about uh, or to share our closing remarks, and then we will end our day. So that is a rough idea of the things that are going on in our program. So um, we are next going to move into our first presentation. And so with that, we have um, Ray Springsteen. Ray is the uh, Vice President and CEO of A Bound Credit Union. And Ray has spent his entire career uh, working in the credit union industry. He's devoted his career to um, providing that support and development of that industry. He also is involved in many things. One of those, he's the on the board of directors for the Kentucky Credit Union League. He is a member of the Region 3 Advisory Board for the National Association of Federal Credit Unions and on the board of United Way of Central Kentucky. And so with that, um, we always welcome the opportunity to, to hear Ray speak and to uh, ask him to share some of his thoughts uh, today. So. Let's hear from Ray. Thank you, Patricia. Again, my name is Ray Springsteen and I'm President and CEO of A Bound Credit Union. The commitment of veterans and the military is what makes our community an incredible place to live and work. Veterans run important associations in our community, including USA Cares and the Knox Regional Development Alliance. They start small businesses and really just make our community better. All of you in this meeting today are great examples of that, and we're excited to have you a part of this session today. The commitment of veterans is what started the credit union 70 years ago. 10 veterans, each with $100, pooled their money together to start the credit union back in November of 1950 to be able to have an impact on our community. And I think that impact is shown today through the investments we make in financial education, on Fort Knox, in Hardin County Schools, and in nearly every other school system in the communities that we serve. The training today is an example of the education that we provide to adults. We partner with experts in our community and other leaders, including the SBDC, and then experts in the credit union to be able to provide valuable content to be able to help others in the community. And we're excited to be able to be able to do this today. Yeah, we would love to be able to be together today. But I think still the power of the network is still there and is as valuable as the content that's going to be provided today. To be able to share your ideas and interact with each other, even if it has to be virtually. We're also excited today to have Congressman Guthrie here. Congressman Guthrie is a graduate of the US Military Academy. He served in the 101st Airborne she ran a small business in Bowling Green, Kentucky, really is a perfect fit to, for our meeting today, and we're certainly fortunate to have it. Congressman Guthrie has served our district. He 
in the House of Representatives since 2008. So thanks again for attending the meeting today and connecting with the Bowen Credit Unit. And also, have a happy Veterans Day. Congressman Guthrie, thanks for joining us. Good day. Hi, I'm Congressman Brett Guthrie of Kentucky 2nd District, here to welcome you to the Veteran to Entrepreneur, produced by the Kentucky Small Business Development Council and sponsored by a Bound Credit Union. I just want to thank you all so much for being here and really encourage you. We need more entrepreneurs in this country. We know that I know personally the veterans are hard workers. They want they have a great work ethic. And so what we hope today is take your strong work ethic and give you the tools so you can be the entrepreneur of your dreams, like that dream business that you had, learn how to apply it, learn how to put it to, to work, and learn how to make all the tools work for you so you can be a successful business person. So I know you're gonna hear from a lot of great presenters today. I like to say when I talk about this for everybody sitting in the room, my goal is for one of you to be one of the presenters someday in the future, talking about what a successful business, you, business you've had, going from being a hardworking soldier and sailor to being a hardworking entrepreneur. So thanks, good luck, and I know you're gonna really enjoy this, this, this presentation. Hi, I'm Brian Smith. I'm Congressman Guthrie's Director of Economic Development, and I wanna start by thanking you for your service to our country. We hope that your participation in today's event has been valuable and you've gained a lot of knowledge that will help you succeed. The presenters today are true experts and they can be an ongoing resource for you and your business. Kentucky is a great place to do business and we wish you all the success. If I can be of service to you, you can reach me at Radcliffe City Hall. Thank you and God bless. I think we may have lost our audio with Brian. Um, so uh, we'll, we'll hopefully, <clears throat> excuse me, get that back. Um, as, as many of you know, Congressman Guthrie is a long um, serving champion for small business in the constituents of the second district. And we welcome the, um, the opportunity to have him join us. And that's something we look forward to every year. Of course, that wasn't possible this year and so we wanted to ensure that you also heard from Brian Smith. Brian is the um, Economic Development Director for Congressman Guthrie's office throughout Kentucky and uh, works tirelessly with all of us to ensure that we have the uh, things that we need and that you as constituents and as business owners have the resources and access to the congressman that is uh, so valuable as you move forward with your business. Um, our next person that we'll be hearing from is Brigadier General Retired Jim Iacocca. Jim is the uh, first president and the chief executive officer for Knox Regional Development Alliance. I'm sorry about that, Jim. People, <laughs> I hate when that happens, but I, it, I drew a blank. So I want to ensure that, uh, that everyone knows more about Knox Regional Development Alliance. They're a very valuable part of our community, and they are a public-private regional alliance focused on protecting and promoting Fort Knox so that we can increase economic development in the area and in Kentucky. Um, he has a, a very uh, prestigious career. His Army career included multiple assignments at Fort Knox, including he was the former Adjutant General of the U.S. Army Human Resources Command. He was the Deputy Commanding General of the U.S. Army Recruiting Command and the former Brigadier Commander for the Army's 3rd Recruiting Brigade. He, in addition to his work at Fort Knox, he's also served in uh, multiple capacities, including at Fort Bragg in North Carolina. He was the 82nd Airborne Division and Army Special Operations Command, uh, uh, deploying to both Afghanistan and Iraq. And he's also served at the Pentagon on the staff for the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. And so uh, I wanted to share that because I think that that uh, not only shows his commitment to this area that he chose to stay and share his talents, but also his commitment to the vitality of our community, Fort Knox and Kentucky. Um, so next we'll hear from Jim Iacocca. Hello everyone. 
It's great to be with you via video today. My name is Jim Iacocca. I retired from the Army in 2017 right here out of Fort Knox and tr transitioned into a great job as President and CEO of the Knox Regional Development Alliance, or KRDA. KRDA's mission is to promote and protect Fort Knox and make sure our region does everything it can to support soldiers, their families, veterans, and retirees. We've recently started a comprehensive spouse employment initiative that provides proactive career coaching and support to military spouses even before they arrive, and also matches them with volunteer business leaders in the community who will help them build a professional network. We also re recently launched the website greaterfortknox.com that is a one-stop shop for military families transitioning to the region with resources and information to help them make their move go as smoothly as possible. We also regularly collaborate with partners throughout the state to expand opportunities for veterans and military families. And we participate in events like this one to be, to be of great support to military veterans like you. This event is a perfect example of the kind of support this community traditionally provides. It's great organizations like a bound credit union that really make my job at KRDA so easy. I'd like to commend all of you for your entrepreneurial pursuits. Whether you're just beginning to explore the possibility of starting your own business, or you've been at it for a while and are participating to learn and grow from this program, I commend each of you. Business ownership is no easy task. It's not for the faint of heart. It's a 24 seven, 365 day a year endeavor that requires incredible dedication. But I would argue that there was no one better suited to be a business owner than a veteran. You have an unmatched work ethic. You know how to lead and care for people. You know how to task organize. You are an expert logistician and planner, and you understand that sometimes it takes sleepless nights to that may be of value to organizations on Fort Knox, our team at KRDA is happy to sit down with you and share our knowledge and perspective on whether we think there is a market on post. We will also put you in touch with a Kentucky agency that can help you pursue government contracts, the Kentucky Procurement Technical Assistance Center, or PTAC. Bottom line, don't feel like you have to do this on your own. Third, mistakes will happen. Expect them. Don't let them deter you. Learn from them and use what you learn to be even more successful. Marine Corps veteran and founder of FedEx, Fred Smith, once said that fear of failure must never be reason not to try something. Smith also said he could not have built FedEx without the skills he learned from military service. Fourth, have a passion for what you do. If you don't, you may want to rethink whether you should be doing it. I'm not saying you won't have days where you're like, what in the world am I doing? But all in all, you need to believe in your work. I know that I have that at KRDA and I'm grateful. And finally, keep your family first. Whether it's a new job or a new business, it can be all consuming and stressful. But remembering that your family has been with you by your side in military career, making countless sacrifices, be sure to honor their commitment and dedication too by making the time you may not have always had during your military service. Let me leave you with some wise words from one of my heroes. General George C. Marshall. He said this to a student at Fort Benning in 1930, but I think it applies to veteran entrepreneurs. Quote, keep your wits about you and your eyes open. Keep on working hard. Sooner or later, the opportunity will present itself, and then you must be prepared, both tactically and temperamentally, to profit by it. 
end quote. Best of luck to all of you. If I can be of any assistance, don't hesitate to contact me. And more importantly, feel free to contact my associate, Beth Avey. You can reach her at beth at grownox.org. Beth is an Army veteran who started a very successful business right here in E-Town. So she is intimately familiar with what you are going through right now. Thanks for allowing me the privilege to be here. And again, good luck. Patricia, your audio is off. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, Jim, thank you. Jim, that was a very motiva motivational message from Jim, and we thank him for that. Um, he mentioned Beth Avey, and, and uh, many of us in this area, if not all of us, know Beth, and, and she is quite the inspiration herself, not only from her military career, but the things that she's done in small business and for small business. And so I know that uh, we he is um, uh, fortunate to have Beth working with him, and that is uh, certainly another resource through the Kentucky Regional, excuse me, the Knox Regional Development Alliance. So um, next we're going to move into our keynote part of our program. With uh, our keynote, we have asked Holly Sexton. Holly was on the committee. We had a very small committee this year. Um, Holly and Becky Ace, uh, Ryan Ferguson with the SBDC and myself have uh, spent uh, a bit of time to pull this together for you. And so Holly, as a very valuable part of that team, is going to now introduce our keynote speaker. Hello, I'm Holly Sexton, public relations and financial education professional with the Bound Credit Union. And it's my pleasure to introduce our keynote speaker for Veterans to Entrepreneurs. We welcome the president and CEO of USA Cares, Trace Chesser. Prior to joining the USA Cares team, Trace was a managing partner of Scout Solutions Group. He also served as vice president of career services for Sullivan University. Prior to his corporate roles, Trace served in the United States Army, where he functioned in a variety of roles, ranging from combat arms occupations to positions with the US Army's recruiting command. He served in the Gulf War with the 101st Airborne Division and has graduated from several military leadership courses and specialized combat operations schools. His civilian education includes a master's in business administration from Sullivan University and a bachelor of science in management from Indiana Wesleyan University. We're so happy to have Trace with us today to speak. Thank you, Trace, and welcome. Hi, I'm Trace Chesser. I'm the president and CEO of USA Cares. I'm glad to be here with you today. I want to thank Abound Credit Union for inviting me to come here and speak with you today about how you as a veteran can start a business. This is a great program. I wish there had been something like this around whenever I exited the Army. And that's what I want to talk to you about really quick. My experience. I had a career with the U.S. Army. Had a great time learned a lot of things, helped to develop who I am today. My transition was not great, and I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do or what I needed to do. Once I left the U.S. Army, I went and I became a college director at ITT Technical Institute. I got into this position, and then I excelled. Soon after that, Sullivan University asked me to come over, and I became a vice president there. A lot of things I did there helped me to build upon the foundation blocks to start a business of my own. And that's what led me to Scout. The Scout Solutions Group was an executive search firm. A friend contacted me and asked me to help him start a business. I had kind of an idea how to start a business. He had a lot of the areas of expertise as far as talent acquisition. Again, going back through even my time with the Army, I was assigned to USREC for a while. So my time with the recruiting command helped start that foundation, which led through the college experience that led me to the point to where I felt confident about starting this company. Wasn't long after that, I was led to USA Cares. And I'll talk about USA Cares more towards the end to explain why I'm doing what I'm doing today. And we wanna encourage you to consider starting a business. A lot of veterans have done it. 
And there are a lot of benefits to going out and doing that as a veteran. The biggest thing I need to tell you is research. You need to do your research. You need to make sure you have a solid plan. Financially, you need to make sure that you have a backup to be able to do that. Developing this plan, you need to consider some steps. First thing is you need to evaluate the needs and the value of your product. What is it that you're going to provide in a business? And make sure that you're, you're doing a fair evaluation of that on all areas such as cost, need, demand, and the market that you're in. Because if you're providing something that maybe there's a great need, maybe it's the best product out there. However, your market where you live may be saturated. Then again, maybe your business could be something that's done through e-commerce. So that may not be as much of a factor, but again, the research is really important. And going through and testing the different support strategies, creating a financial model. I wanna tell you, that probably was the number one thing for myself. When we created that financial model to determine the sustainability of our business, that's when I knew. This is what I want to do. That's when I realized that this is actually going to work. Some people may not feel that after doing that. So I don't want to discourage you if you don't, if you do it and it doesn't jump out at you and you say, Hey, this is the greatest thing. If it's a solid plan, you did your research and you know what you're doing. You need to talk to other experts in the industry, talk to investors, find out what support is out there that can help you with this and survey potential customers. Get their input. Find out what it is that they need and what they want and how you can provide that service. Again, I don't know if you're going to sell something. Like my friend, there's a flag back here. I don't know if you can see it all, but Chris Cruz, he started a veteran-owned business and he's building flags and he's employing veterans. I think that's great. Some people may provide more of a service like I did. Doing recruiting, we didn't build things. We help people connect to other people and find those opportunities that led to their next step in their career. So whether if you're providing a service or a product, do your research, make sure that you know what's going to work and what's gonna be beneficial. Once you've did that, you need to think about the different types of business structures. And there are several, but I highlighted one here. Limited liability company, an LLC. That's what I use. And an LLC is great because it can actually provide you with the separation of this is not your personal investments, bank accounts, and everything else. It's not going to necessarily affect your family. It separates you. Get a tax ID number you're able to have a separate bank account. You have yours for you and your family, or just you, if it's just you. And then you have your bank account for your company and they operate independently. And then that way, God forbid, if there's a reason something happened to one or the other, it doesn't impact both. And that's why I think an LLC is great. When you get started, you need to contact the Kentucky Secretary of State's office. There, that's when you'll see the beginning steps. You go to their site, the One Stop Business Portal, and it tells you step one, two, three, all the way through. And you click on each one of those. And you know, one of the things I never thought about was a name of a company. I don't even remember how we came up with Scout Solutions Group. I just remember it was being talked about and it started out as Scout Solutions. So then we did the search and we found out there were a few Scout Solutions. So we had to figure out something else to do. That was approved by the Secretary of State's office. And then we started going through each one of these other steps to get a tax ID number, you know, to talk about the insurance, open bank accounts, and do all the other things that we talked about before. Here, they're gonna guide you through each one of these steps. And it's, it's very important. You have to go through these steps to make sure that you are protecting you yourself and the business you're trying to start. So that's huge. You need to go through these steps and make sure that you've identified it. Another area that's going to provide you assistance is the Small Business Administration. 
Small Business Administration or the SBA has another site that will help guide you as well. And they'll tell you some other things and they'll let you know other resources that are out there that will help you as a small business owner to get started. But there's another part of this that if you qualify, there's two things. There's a service disabled veteran owned small business identification. And then there's a veteran owned small business. Depending on disability ratings, you're one or the other. And you need to go through the VA and they have their own portal and they will help you to create and actually become a SDVOSB or a VOSB. Doing this is really, that's huge. Starting a business, if you can qualify, that is huge because what happens is you will then have access to contracting opportunities. Again, depending on what it is that you're providing, what service. I know with myself, we actually started doing recruiting. It was really tough to find opportunities for contracting under the recruiting category. And then you're going to get these things that are called NACE codes. And this, we don't have time to go through everything like SAMS.gov, the payment system and everything. But this identifier set us apart. When it got into other opportunities, even outside the government, dealing with large corporations, there are things, programs that they use that are supplier diversity programs. Veteran-owned companies fall into supplier diversity. So it's really important that you figure out all the avenues. There were several cases that we were able to get into companies and do the executive recruiting for private companies, large companies, just because we would match up with their supplier diversity requirements. VA actually has set aside programs and they call them set aside programs because they want to give the opportunities to a veteran owned small business or a service disabled veteran owned small business. And they want to make sure that you have the first opportunity to provide that service to the VA. You're a veteran. Why not? Former President George Bush put together an executive order. And in that executive order, he directed the VA to work with, to try to find programs to help build up more veteran-owned companies. And that's why this exists. And that's why it's important for you to look this up and research. So through the VA, they have their own portal. You go here and you go through the application process to get registered to be in their directory so that VA employees can look you up and find you and try to do business with you. So it's huge. You need to take advantage of this. Starting a business can be tough, but I want to encourage you to explore it. Do the research, talk to people, try to figure out what you can do. Quickly, I want to go back and just tell you with USA Cares, I was drawn to USA Cares. I loved my business. I loved having a service disabled veteran owned small business. But what I really wanted to do was work with veterans. So I decided to take a detour. Maybe one day I'll go back and start another service disabled veteran on small business. But today I get the opportunity to work with a lot of veterans, those that have different types of challenges that they're facing. You know, it could be the combat injured or housing assistance, stopping foreclosures, stopping evictions. That's huge. Being able to help them with emergency assistance, whether if that's utilities, food, auto payment, and career transition. Remember I told you about I had the recruiting background? That's what led me to USA Cares, knowing that I can help veterans get into the workforce. And just like this, maybe be able to provide some encouragement for someone to go out and either get into a job or start their own business. So again, that's why I want to encourage you to look at this is because that's my desire is to see you all succeed, whether if it is going to work for someone else or if it is starting a business. I really, really encourage you to explore all avenues and figure out what's going to be best for you. And if you have a family, the best for your family. 
So again, thank you so much and have a great day. My name is Brian Anderson. I'm the national spokesperson for USA Cares. And there's a couple reasons why. Um, the reason that I help is because I got to good pretty quick and I want to help other veterans get back to good. Um, so for a while after my therapy, I was looking for a foundation to support and kind of help me help veterans because that was important to me. So I started looking around and there's a couple of foundations that came up, but one of them that really kind of stood out was USA Cares. I feel honored to be here because of that, because of what these people are doing, um, the pride these people have, and the compassion they have. They want to be here, they want to help, and uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna raise money to help other soldiers that need it, whether it be, you know, an emergency type situation, whether it be therapy, or whether it's helping them get in a job. Moving on with their life, that's what we do, that's what USA Care is. is. Wow, that was motivational. I'm, I'm sure that all of you enjoyed that. You know, I've met Trace uh, before and I've, I've certainly enjoyed hearing from him today and knowing that uh, he was available to share his experiences with you all. And I know that I can speak for him and our other speakers as we will be sending out their contact information after the program. We'll be sending that out by email and you will have the availability of that direct contact with him and with his organization. And uh, USA Cares is a program that we've all followed for many years and to see the growth and development and the amazing work they do um, is, is really something that we all take pride in. Um, I know I speak for everyone. Um, so thank you, Trace, and thank you, Holly, for that introduction. We're going to hear from Holly again, and our next speaker is Chuck Eads, and Chuck Eads is with the uh, with the Bound Credit Union. He's their chief lending officer. Chuck actually gave a presentation uh, last year and it was very um, well received and it was one that people have asked for again. So we are uh, asking Chuck to join us again this year and to share information about what types of financing options are available for small business. You know, that's one of the questions we at the SBDC here every day is what are some things that are available and how do we ensure that we are presenting the best picture of our business and the way in the best way for us to communicate with the stakeholder in this case, which is the bank. So uh, with that, I'm going to ask uh, Ryan if we can now hear from Holly Sexton again, the PR and uh, financial education professional with Abound Credit Union and Chuck Eads. Hello, I'm Holly Sexton, and I'm proud to come from a military family. My father served in the Navy during Vietnam, and I'm thankful for his service and for yours. Next up, I'm pleased to welcome a colleague to the program. Chuck Eads is the Chief Lending Officer at Abound Credit Union. Chuck's stepfather served in the Army, and his nephew just finished up service in the Navy. Chuck is a member of the Hardin County Chamber of Commerce Board of Directors and he's been working hard at Abound for nearly five years. His experience in lending goes all the way back to 2002. It is my pleasure to welcome Chuck Eads to Veterans to Entrepreneurs. Greetings everyone, and thank you once again for joining us this year for our annual Veterans to Entrepreneur workshop. So far today, we've heard from a virtual who's who among local and state business leaders uh, with a strong focus, of course, on veterans and opportunities for veterans to transition into other career opportunities. So my name is Chuck Eads. I'm the Chief Lending Officer here at Bound Credit Union, and I wanted to take a few minutes to talk about some of the products and services that are generally available for anyone who has that entrepreneurial spirit and is looking to either start a business or grow an existing business. So certainly, uh, the virtual format is different than in years past, and as you can see, I'm actually working from my home office. So while this format does limit us somewhat, uh, taking us from a conversational type workshop to simply informational, uh, hopefully we can still provide some insight into the process of starting or growing a business. 
uh, and many of the things that you'll need to consider along the way uh, from getting your game plan together to arranging financing. Uh, even in these challenging times, we are still seeing ample opportunities in and around central Kentucky. So let's go ahead and get started here this afternoon. Uh, I'm going to transition over to uh, my PowerPoint presentation, which will kind of be a guide for us here this afternoon. Uh, and I'm going to share my screen with you. And so let's go ahead and get started. So again, uh, you know, going about this here, uh, this is like the fifth year that we've uh, done this. Uh, and what we're trying to do is basically, uh, you know, a general introduction uh, and look at different types of business opportunities. So those can either be existing turnkey opportunities, uh, startup uh, opportunity, uh, if you're you know, more entrepreneurial and want to really start things from the ground up. Uh, we want to talk a little bit about who the SBA is and what their role is in getting small businesses either started or to help them grow, uh, what programs are available for veterans uh, within the SBA program and otherwise. Uh, one of those programs is the Veterans Advantage program through SBA. So we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, we'll take a look at the myriad of other SBA programs that are available. So um, there's a lot of them, as you will see here a little later. Uh, we won't go into a lot of detail, but there are other details available and experts that can help you with that uh, down the road. And we'll talk about where to get started and how to get started in the process. Uh, what things does the lender need uh, to get the process started? What are some costs associated with it? Uh, how long will it take? And, you know, I'll go through an example of financing uh, to show you what that looks like from a down payment, a loan amount, and a cash flow standpoint. So, and we'll wrap up with taking a look at what resources are available for you uh, as you get started in this process. So, um, first, I'd like to start with what we see as the most common opportunities or requests, at least here locally. Uh, residential rental properties is a good way to get started in the business. Uh, a one to four unit property with existing tenants under lease. Uh, this is a business opportunity, right? There's income coming in from the property uh, and you have expenses and a mortgage payment tied to that, uh, but it can be uh, a couple of things. One, a good source of income for you for the next several years. Uh, also a chance to build assets. I mean, as you pay the loan down uh, and you own the house outright, I mean, certainly that's an asset that you can share, uh, you know, with your relatives later on and so on. Uh, if the loan is in your name personally, then our residential mortgage team, mortgage team can handle those requests. Uh, if the loan is in the business name or a five plus unit property, then our commercial team uh, can handle those for you as well. So either way, uh, you know, we're set up and most lenders will be set up to help you in that way. So if you're relying on income from the property to get started, uh, to make the loan payments, uh, then really no history may be required of owning rental properties and such. If you're relying on income from the property, uh, a lease income to make the payment, Typically, we would want to see a two-year history uh, in order to better understand uh, what the cash flow of the property looks like. Another opportunity that is very typical uh, is used for acquiring uh, an existing business, an income-producing property such as a strip mall uh, with existing tenants that are under lease. There's good cash flow in the property. Uh, typically, to acquire a property like this, uh, you'd be required to put around 20% down or more, and you'll be required to provide a personal guarantee uh, for that loan. So, again, similar to rental real estate properties, uh, if you're relying on income from the property, uh, the lease income to make the loan payments, uh, we need to understand a two-year history uh, of the operating and borrowing entity that outlines the income and expenses tied to the property uh, to understand uh, what the overall financial condition there is. So if you're wanting to start your own business from the ground up, it's not a, a rental home, it's not a, a larger scale strip mall or other property that's generating cash flow currently, um, we wanna talk through here a little later about the, uh, the concept of going from idea to actual business, right? Uh, business planning stages, we're talking about market analysis, feasibility study around your business idea, detailed business plan uh, with a startup for a startup or acquisition is critically important. And the SBDC can assist you uh, with those things each step along the way. Um, so the credit union offers certain loan options, uh, basically for a real estate secured loan for existing property. Uh, we do offer loans for undeveloped land and developed land. The basic difference there, it's we're still raw land, but it's whether it has the utilities and other things uh, added in yet. Uh, construction loan, again, build from the ground up to suit your business. 
commercial industrial loans. Those are things where you might acquire a facility uh, plus expenditures like furniture, fixtures, and other industrial equipment. Uh, straight equipment loans, so again, the collateral for the loan uh, would be a truck or a van or, or a piece of machinery uh, that you would need to finance and you don't want to pay cash for. Uh, Asset-based loans, uh, receivable is a good example of that. Um, and then unsecured loans, we do look at uh, smaller unsecured requests, typically uh, under 50,000. Um, and those would be more based on your personal credit history. So who is the SBA? So past our loan options, what the SBA is, obviously it's the US Small Business Administration. Uh, it's been around for nearly 70 years. SBA is not a lender. So I think that's important to understand during this process. Uh, what they do, uh, similar to how uh, the VA provides mortgage loans uh, for veterans that are eligible, uh, they provide a guarantee for the loan. So they're not actually lending the money, they're just helping the lender to make the loan decision because there's a guarantee behind it uh, from the federal government. So again, it helps us or any other lender mitigate risk. So typically uh, with a commercial loan, uh, the, compared to SBA, uh, SBA offers typically lower down payments uh, than non-SBA loans. Again, maybe 10 versus 20%. Uh, similar repayment options, although uh, you know they offer amortizations up to 25 years. And again, the guarantee uh, helps the lender out in making the decision uh, due to things, higher risk factors like lack of collateral, startup business, or just a higher risk business in general. So what of those SBA programs, uh, I think that one of the ones that I wanted to talk through here today was just the SBA Veterans Advantage Program. So um, it is one of a, uh, a multiple number of SBA products uh, that are out there. Uh, these are subject to change at any time uh, and so are typically renewed uh, on, as I say here on the fiscal year, starting uh, ending September 30th, starting October 1st. Um, and then funds are appropriated uh, on an annual basis. Uh, but just digging into that program a little bit, um, and you'll see here in a minute when we look at some of the other SBA programs. So <clears throat> there's basically two aspects to this uh, for loans up to 350,000, which we find uh, is sufficient uh, for a lot of business startups uh, or veterans looking to get into uh, their own business. Uh, it would mirror the express loan program uh, or uh, you know, up to $5 million able to be borrowed, uh, which again mirrors the 7A program. So, the lender offers different levels of guarantees with those. Uh, they also offer a you know, seven-year line of credit uh, for the express program or up to 25-year uh, for the S7A program. Uh, and there's other fees and things with that that you want to better understand uh, as you go through the process to understand what your interest rate is, uh, what upfront fees are involved, and what your monthly payments, most importantly, will be. So what I've got here on this screen and on the, on the next slide, uh, Obviously, it's too small to see, so we're not going to go through these line by line, but just suffice it to say that um, these are overall uh, the programs that are available from SBA. So you can see um, there's a number of these programs. I think we've got highlighted here the, S the 7A, the SBA uh, Veterans Advantage, and then the last one I have highlighted um, is actually a 504 loan. So um, these are one of the most common loans used by SBA, and again, uh, these are for situations where they fall just outside the comfort level uh, of a lender's normal pr lending program, which we kind of already outlined a little bit earlier. Um, there's some additional details here around the SBA 504 as compared to the 7A loan. Uh, but I think as I look at it, you know, 504 loans are good for commercial real estate, building improvements, uh, machinery, equipment, typically owner-occupied properties. Uh, it can be existing or ground-up construction. Uh, the 7A program is to purchase a business uh, with or without, you know, commercial real estate. So it could just be the asset is the business uh, and not necessarily secured by commercial real estate. Uh, need funds for working capital, furniture, fixtures, uh, et cetera. So, again, I think the takeaway here is just that um, there's a multitude of opportunities uh, with, one, your normal set of lending products from uh, any commercial lender uh, and then kind of expanding that. Uh, is the products that SBA offers. So where do we get started, right? I think one of the first things that you'll need to understand uh, and be able to communicate uh, to whoever you're working with on this is, are we talking about a startup? Is it an ongoing business? Uh, is it a franchise? Because there's certain requirements and covenants associated with franchises that you need to fully understand. There are typically costs associated with those franchises but there's benefits tied to those as well, uh, you know, from a marketing standpoint or overall support standpoint. Uh, 
Uh, is it a real estate purchase? Is it an existing business? Again, we talked about that. Um, meet with a small business development company. I mean, Patricia uh, with the SBDC here in Elizabethtown uh, talked a little bit about that, but um, especially if you're looking for a startup or even to grow, uh, preparing a business plan is a critical part. Uh, gather your financials. Uh, any lender is gonna wanna understand what your financial situation is outside of what you're planning to do. Bring contracts, proposals, agreements, any ideas that you have to the table uh, and prepare financial projections. So when you're, when you're working with a startup uh, and a business that doesn't exist, uh, lenders are actually allowed to use, as long as they're well-based and founded, uh, projections uh, from the borrower or the business owner on what they think their income and expenses will be over time. Typically, there's a ramp up period with that, uh, but we are allowed to look at that uh, in, in, the, in situations where there, maybe there's no cash flow coming in currently, or there's going to be six months or 12 months ramp up time uh, with that before cash flow starts coming in. Um, you know, from a legal standpoint, what sort of company are you going to form? You know, a limited liability company, an S or C Corp, a partnership, uh, these matter. There's certain benefits and detriments to doing either. Um, so what does my lender need, right? And there's a funny picture here of paperwork stacked up so high you can't even see this person's face. So first of all, there is a lot of things to verify or, uh, you know, make sure that we're on solid ground from an underwriting standpoint. But if your application process looks like this, there probably is something wrong with what's going on. So generally, we want to see your business plans and projections, three your personal and business tax returns, your personal financial statement that lays out your assets, your liabilities, net worth, uh, real estate owned, uh, things like that, your debts. Uh, review your credit report. So you will be asked to guarantee the loan. The lender will want to see a copy of your credit report in the process to understand how you're handling your other obligations, how you've done so over the last five to 10 years, because uh, that can give them a general sense for uh, whether we're going to get aid back or not. Um, again, purchase contract and agreements, an application that the lender will help you, uh, SBA required forms if you're going to go that route. If you're looking at real estate, again, purchase contracts, any improvements, uh, an appraisal and environmental, title search and policy. If you're looking to purchase equipment or a vehicle, it's a little simpler, purchase order or proposal, uh, make model serial number, we will be taking uh, the vehicle as collateral for the loan. Uh, and those are fairly straightforward and a streamlined process. If you're looking to build something from the ground up, generally you would need uh, bids and proposals. So in aggregate, it would show us the scope of the project that you have in mind, uh, get an idea of how long that will take, uh, and a construction contract with uh, a licensed uh, general contractor, uh, preferably somebody who is experienced uh, in that type of building. Uh, again, blueprint prints, uh, and again, understanding timeline, copy of contract for purchase of land. So putting all that together, what the lender is going to do is they're going to order an appraisal uh, that is based on your plans and specs and your blueprints. Uh, so, and compare that to, you know, similar properties that exist. Um, buy an ongoing business, uh, an asset purchase agreement if it's not real estate, again, three years of seller CPA tax returns, uh, income projections for three years if you have those put together. And again, we talked a little bit about franchises. What does it cost? So it's important to understand in this process that there are costs involved uh, for the lender. Typically, the lenders may charge an origination fee, uh, but there also are costs associated with the commercial real estate report, uh, an appraisal, $3,500 to $5,000 typically. Uh, environmental reports generally required uh, for commercial real estate, anywhere from 800 to 3,000. Uh, a survey if required, you know, title search and uh, final title policy. Uh, and then some SBA programs have various fees. Again, those are the types of things that you would want to understand uh, before you begin the process with the lender. How long does it take? So uh, there's several things going on concurrently. Uh, when you're going through the loan process, generally the underwriting turn time here can run anywhere from 15 to 20 days. Uh, appraisals and environmental reports uh, average three to four weeks. Uh, title search and policies can take three to four weeks uh, to get for a lender. Um, and then there's other considerations with SBA approval and so on. Now, the good news is here uh, that all of these things can be done concurrently again. So I would say, you know, you would want to understand that it would probably be anywhere from 40 to a 90 day timeline on these from the time that you apply uh, to the time that you close and your loan is. 
So I wanted to go through an example of financing. What does this look like if you're going to acquire an existing income producing building that's 100% occupied by four current tenants? Uh, so you've got a purchase price here, hypothetically of a million dollars. You have a down payment of 200,000, which we'll talk about here in a second. Your loan amount is 800,000, 80% loan to value. That's fairly typical in the commercial lending space. Again, the four tenants produce 10,000 per month in combined lease income. Your monthly expenses for taxes, insurance, maintenance, and management, and so on is around 2,000. Uh, thus, your net operating income is at 8,000 a month at 5% interest rate for 25 years. That's about 46.77 per month. So the pass-through income that you would realize on this property if fully leased would be around 33.23 per month. Uh, so for many folks uh, wanting to get into uh, a business, uh, down payment is truly a challenge. Uh, so there are grant programs and things out there available. Uh, we see frequently members uh, tap into the equity in their current home. Uh, we can do a loan to provide for your down payment as long as it's secured by collateral like that. Uh, and then, uh, although a financial advisor wouldn't advise along these lines, uh, sometimes substantial retirement accounts can be borrowed from uh, temporarily for that sort of thing. So, or you may just have the money available to you. Uh, it can also be a gift uh, from a friend or a relative. So to kind of wrap things up here, again, there are plenty of additional resources out there. I've listed a few of them here. Uh, this top uh, website, there's about 25 of the top free resources out there and available. Uh, I would certainly encourage you to go out and look at those uh, when you can. Again, your Small Business Development Center, uh, here's the information for the one here in Elizabethtown. Uh, Boots to Business is another uh, kind of boot camp here locally uh, and with the SBA uh, for folks trying to start their own business. And again, uh, there are information and uh, calculators and such on our website uh, that you can check out at any time. And again, the SBA has its own website uh, shown here, www.sba.gov. So uh, again, uh, appreciate your time here this afternoon. Uh, again, my contact information is here. Uh, feel free to reach out to me at any point in the future. My email address is here, my phone number and extension, uh, our physical address. Uh, be glad to call you back and get the process started or at least have a conversation about what you're trying to do uh, as you move forward uh, and transition uh, into your new career. So again, thanks again for uh, attending this year's workshop. Uh, and again, best of luck. Well, thank you, Chuck. That was fantastic. You know, one of the key things is uh, any information is good information and certainly right now with the uh, disruption we have to our businesses and to our environment, it is increasingly important that we look at all our options and so uh, financing certainly can be one of those and the key, as Chuck said, is to ensure that you have the things that you need so that they can make uh, a good decision for you. And, that includes things like your business plan and your development plan. As an existing business, oftentimes that business plan is something you haven't worked on in a while. So our resource partners, um, as we'll talk about in just a moment, are there to help you with that. You know, Chuck is, uh, I think, an excellent uh, example of why it's important that you know that because as a lender, he is sharing with you the types of things that are important for all lenders. And so you'll wanna keep that in mind. Um, one of the key things too that I wanna mention or one of the things that I wanna mention as well, if I haven't already, is that we are actually uh, sharing the webinar with you after the program today. So you will get a copy of that a little later in the day and that will allow you to revisit some of the things that you've heard. Uh, as well, we'll be putting together a handout uh, and I say a handout, a document that will allow you to have access to the contact information for each of our speakers. And so uh, we'll make sure that we include uh, individuals such as uh, Chuck and Trace and uh, Jim and Congressman Guthrie and Brian. So all of those will be available to you as well. And then one of the things I like to do is after we have our, uh, our event today is to think through if there are other things that perhaps would be valuable to you. And so, one of those, uh, Chuck mentioned several things that are uh, included in the Kentucky Small Business Association 
uh, resource guide. And so I'll make sure that you have a link for that as well to get you more information there. So next on the program is uh, Patricia Krausman. So <laughs> I'm actually going to be providing information for you today on the um, a little bit about small business, but particularly about resources and things that are available to you as you navigate uh, the next um, part of your business or, or journey for your business. So with that, let's, all right. So let's talk a little bit about small business in general. You know, in Kentucky, small business is big business. And, and here's some stats just to share with you and give you an idea of what that looks like. So in Kentucky, we have 355,998 small businesses. And the most interesting thing I've always found is that 99.3% of those are small business. We, um, Kentucky, collects uh, 712,000. 477 small business employees, and that's what they track. And then um, that's 43% of actually of all Kentucky employees overall. And then small business exporting, and I'll be sharing a little bit about resources um, later for that, but small business exporting is a major new source of income for many small business or primary source, but it is one of the fastest growing pieces of our Kentucky economy. And I know that um, that's something that many of you are engaged in, but we want to ensure that you, you have access to information and support to help you with that as well. And all of this is taken from the SBA Kentucky Small Business Profile, which they put out every year. So this is a great way uh, to learn this and more, and I'll include that in my materials after today. Whoops, sorry. All right, so let's drill down a little bit more about uh, a few more statistics for you. Veteran-owned businesses are tracked through the economic census data with the U.S. Census Bureau. So uh, here in Kentucky, we have um, a little, as you see, we have 33,424 businesses, and a, a little under 10% of those are veteran-owned. And out of that, 106,000 employees and um, 18,000 self-employed individuals. The reason I started with Kentucky is because I think it's an excellent contrast to look at where we are relative to the United States. So as you see, there are 5.5 million businesses uh, in the census data of 2017. But uh, the most interesting to me is that 7.2% are the veteran owned. And I think this is something we all know here in our area, particularly, um, veteran-owned businesses are a, a big part of our economy here, and actually more so than in the country as a whole. The um, they the uh, excuse me, the U.S. has 5.8 million people that are employed, and as we see that, we have a big part of that as well relative to our participation rate. I pulled some things for you just to really in general talk about veteran entrepreneurs. And so these are things that are very, uh, that are reported through many different organizations. And so I wanted you to, I wanted us to just touch on that today. So first of all, veteran entrepreneurs are more likely to own a business than non-veterans. I think that um, I certainly have seen that over my time here with the SBDC and my work with Fort Knox. and. What we recognize is that veterans have those attributes that allow them. You've gained those things through your industry, um, through your, your work with the uh, military, and it's allowed you to gain skills and valuable things that you can transfer to business ownership. And out of that, um, you as a whole, businesses and entrepreneurs are more successful overall. Uh, they tend to out earn non-veteran entrepreneurs. And one of those keys there, I think, is that not only do veterans bring those skills and talents, but they also, as a second career many times or as another career, they understand um, a lot more about what they want and how they will develop that. And they, they have uh, are successful in that sense. We have a very diverse background with veteran entrepreneurs that's uh, relative to age, race, race ethnicity, um, 
And I think you'll see that even more so in this area because we have a very dynamic um, veteran owned business population. And we'll talk some more about resources and support for that. And again, it varies by age, gender, uh, all of those things we see a variety of. So that creates uh, a very broad sense of veteran business ownership. Some of the traits as I was referring to for high performing entrepreneurs and the things that we see is you have great decision making skills. And that is in times like this, particularly in chaotic environments or times when things don't go just as planned, you certainly understand contingency plans and how to pivot. And so that is a trait of any successful business owner, but particularly veterans have that um, as they have that and show that very well. Confidence in your ability and skills and being confident in what you do sometimes is half the battle. That independence piece of, uh, and we hear this regularly, those of us that work with veteran business owners, it's like they are now, they've had a career where they've worked, uh, served for the country and for the military and they've worked uh, every day to ensure the stability of our country and they do that through teamwork and uh, development and, and so this next career, this next uh, second career oftentimes is uh, focused more on independence, being independent and doing things your particular way. And I think that says a lot for why veteran business owners are successful. And lastly is understanding that sense of being self-sufficient or self-efficient. And those are things that are going to not only serve you well in your personal life, but certainly in business. And these are some of the most common for veteran entrepreneurship. And that organization is through Syracuse University and they have a very um, vibrant. So that may be something you wanna check out if you're looking for more information or resources uh, in that area. Uh, next, I wanna share just a little bit about the Kentucky Small Business Development Center. I mentioned this at the beginning of our program and I wanna ensure that those of you uh, that aren't familiar perhaps with the SBDC or need a refresher on the types of things we can do uh, that you have that today. And so the KSBDC has been uh, in Kentucky for, for a uh, very uh, long time, 35 plus years in providing professional and support assistance to our communities throughout Kentucky. We have 120 counties. We serve all of, in Kentucky and we serve all of those counties. We have offices statewide that are available to help um, any, any business that's within Kentucky's boundaries. And we also have a footprint where we can, um, we can, we, we have some geographic designations that allows us to best serve um, our communities. But on the other hand, we also have the ability for all of our consultants throughout Kentucky to work with anyone, no matter where they are. And that's a real strength, I think, with the SBDC is that we can actually um, expand our exposure and our network to meet everyone's needs. Um, one of the key things with the SBDC is we are an innovative partnership between the, the SBA, we see partial funding from the Small Business Administration, and those dollars are matched with, um, as this slide says, Kentucky Institutions of Higher Education, but we've had, um, we have expanded that ability to network with community partners and others in recent years. And so not only do we work with higher education, but we have that ability to work with those community support programs, whether that be a chamber or economic development, um, government, those types of things. So the SBDC has expanded our ability to network and hope, and we know that that's gonna serve our communities better. Our uh, link that's listed at the bottom of this page is our Kentucky sbdc.org, which is our website. And so you can find a great deal of information there and certainly connect with resources in your area. A little bit about what we do. So we have a mantra, start smart, fund smart, grow smart. And that's our way of saying, we want to, in, to um, provide that direction and support and coaching to allow you to uh, not only start your business and be successful, but also to find those funding options and develop a plan for funding to prepare loan proposals. Oftentimes we are that resource among others to help you identify what are the options? What are some things that will work for you 
in your particular um, your particular business um, goals. And then lastly, grow smart. Uh, actually, there's not lastly, I'm gonna add a third, but lastly on this slide is grow smart. And grow smart is that sense of not only business plan development, but strategic growth planning and development. You know, oftentimes we see that businesses, um, they, they do very well, they're very well at what they do, they're very successful. But when it comes to growing that business into finding new markets and developing those markets, that might not be an expertise that they have in their wheelhouse. And so we are a resource to help with that as well. And then the other, um, and I'm, I don't know what the SMART acronym would be for that, but we'll talk about some resources uh, next that will help you as you uh, face diver uh, adversity. And so we in past years have called that, um, a, you know, a program that allows us to help you um, hopefully continue business, a continuation plan, and to ensure that you have the things that you need when we, um, as, as we come out of this pandemic and uh, impact to our businesses. Some things that we do very quickly are just, we provide uh, training programs as well. Uh, they're not listed on the slide, but we provide uh, a great deal of training programs. And like uh, everyone, we have, geared up and actually ramped up and we have a wide variety of webinars and information. We're partnering with other organizations so that we can ensure that you have the knowledge that you need to move forward. And so we have a Wednesday webinar series. And when I send out the information, I'll share that link with you as well that you can register for. And, and every week there is a new um, business owner or company talking about a particular uh, relevant topic. And so that can range from social media um, development. It, we've certainly talked a lot about funding and the, uh, the responses with, through the CARES Act with small business and what that looks like and guiding that. So those are a great way for you to learn more about things that are going on, but also to develop and grow your business. We work, as I said, with startups and existing businesses and uh, Chuck mentioned pre-venture and feasibility. And that is a big part of what we do is we wanna ensure that if you make this uh, leap, if you do decide to go into business that you have the things and tools and resources that you need to be successful and that you've thought through that and that you understand that it's a right fit for you, for your family, for the community. And so that's a part of what we do business plans, financial plans, um, the financial plans, we can look at budgeting with a business as well as doing projections for the future and to provide that loan package assisting uh, for financing options. We work on marketing plans. Business continuation is really something that we're heavily engaged in now, um, ensuring that the businesses that have been impacted, which is, is most every business, sometimes some businesses have been at uh, impacted and it's create opportunity. And so there's growth opportunity, but in, in many cases, small businesses have um, had, to, had to look at how they can continue business and hopefully uh, keep that business uh, viable until things change within the economy. And then exit planning is a sense of just knowing what uh, the next, next uh, step is for you and your company and, and how you can exit that business and meet your goals. So I mentioned uh, one of the key things that we've done and, and we were, um, which we're very proud of, but we, we very quickly addressed the need for small business relative to the uh, coronavirus and the impact to the economy and the small business. So one of the things that we, we did and we continue to do is to provide information and resources through our web portal, which is listed at the bottom, that will give you tools, um, and guides, think access to, in, to uh, uh, experts and things that you will need to be successful. So we take that very seriously and we certainly um, want to ensure that you know how to reach us and that we have things uh, available. You can access our website at any time. And so some of the tools and documents, which I'll share in a moment are available to you whenever you are available to access those. You know, there's no single cure for every business, but it's that first step of sitting down with someone to talk about your unique situation. And that's the KSBDC and others who can help you 
hopefully navigate this, uh, these difficult times and then position your business so that you can recover and grow into the future. Um, one of the things that we have done as well as others is we are now providing a great deal of um, outreach consulting. We are not currently what meeting uh, individually face to face with clients, but we uh, have lots of options for you and have found that to be uh, very successful and uh, actually a welcome for many of our clients in our in areas that perhaps we don't have an office. So as I mentioned, we can, can meet with you statewide. The um, one of those is, is web conferencing. I put Zoom, but there are others. Web conferencing or video conferencing is a big part. That's a big part of our everyday lives now. Email, of course, and then just a phone call. We can work with you over the phone to help you develop that plan of action for your particular business. Um, one of the things that we have created, and I say we, the royal we, our state office, and I know Kevin Norville and Ryan and others have put a great deal of effort into putting together these uh, documents and things, guides that you have now available to you to, as you move forward. So I've, I've listed some of those for you, the preparedness plan for reopening. Uh, there's a checklist for managing in times of financial difficulty. What are some things you can do and make sure that you've checked all the boxes? Um, there's a guide to conquering a business crisis. There's a guide to small business emergency loans. And as we know, that has changed uh, over time because the, um, the CARES Act had some funding that was available and we are hopeful that that's gonna happen again. Uh, and when that happens, we will have updated and new information to help move you forward. So I am actually going to spend just a little bit of time on the SBA because we're running a little short on time. Um, and also because Chuck did such a wonderful job of uh, providing that information. SBA is that resource that is tasked with making America's dream of business ownership a reality. And they do that in many different ways. The single best way to learn more about SBA programs is through their website, sba.gov. Um, their mission, like ours is to help Americans start building grow businesses and so they do that through many ways and we've talked about a few of those today already access to capital government contracting and exporting and small business advocacy. Um, there are a few programs I want to touch on briefly uh, the office of veteran business development is one of those and uh, they have programs throughout the country. They are actually the overriding agency within SBA that directs other programs that uh, and, and SBA's response to uh, and support for veteran business ownership. The uh, contracting support system has an SDVOSB contracting guide and they can provide guidance not only through their, um, off their staff that provides that support but through other things online as well and then uh, again, the entrepreneurial support programs, the VBOCs is the Veteran Business Outreach Centers, and those are located throughout the country. Our Veteran Business Outreach person is Reggie Ordonez, and I'll give his contact for you a little bit later. And then, of course, SBDC's SCORE and Women's Business Centers are just some of the SBA support programs that are available. Uh, I'm not going to go into this slide a great deal because... Um, the um, uh, Chuck did a beautiful job of going over most of these. The one that I want to mention, though, is the uh, that the CARES Act, as I said before, the IDLE and PPP loans were part of an SBA-driven uh, um, program. And so I know that many of you access those programs and that uh, there's been lots of changes and, and um you know, it's a little, a little rough at first for us to all be able to understand how that, that worked and to get up to speed. But those are programs that SBA administered and will be doing as well as we move forward. Uh, the other program that Chuck talked about a little bit was Boots to Business. And Boots to Business is a program that is on pause right now. It's located uh, in partnership with SBA. Um, I mentioned the Syracuse Institute for Veteran and Military Families Department of
Defense and the Department of Veterans Affairs. And so it is open to veterans, spouses, and family members. I'll include more information in the packet. Pause until we are able to meet uh, in person. So another source of support is our cabinet, uh, Kentucky Cabinet for Economic Development, the Office of Entrepreneurship. And they have many different programs that support small business and, and they're great partners with the SBDC and others in that we all have the same goal. And so um, they provide some funding programs. So there is access to capital. They also look at exporting and expanding markets, and they have programs and resources that can um, help with that. The business advocacy um, is their way of providing uh, support to small businesses that actually are looking to, um, that have issues with government regulation and, and provide that support as well. And then innovation, and through the um, RISE program, they have funded innovation centers throughout Kentucky that are available to support those uh, companies that have uh, new and developing uh, innovative ideas and products and services. And so with that, you can uh, connect with all of those through the Think Kentucky website. The Kentucky Business One Stop is actually a program, uh, excuse me, program is actually a portal and this is one that, that you have probably um, accessed if you are in business or if you've started a business in recent years. And it is uh, a work in progress. I think it will continue to be, but it is a great resource to allow you to uh, register online, to, to create things like your LLC, to apply for a sales tax number, all of those things that you can do through that portal. And the real goal is just to bring everything to a one stop area so that you do not have to go from place to place to place to find out uh, what's needed for your business and what you are required regulation wise or permit wise or whatever, what you're required to do to develop uh, your business or grow your business. And then this, um, this slide is actually, I uh, recognized after I uh, reviewed my slides this morning that I'd left out a slide. So I'm gonna start with this and I'm gonna add in a few other things for you uh, kind of as we close out our program today. So one of those is there are veteran business resource partners that are specifically focused on providing support to, to veteran businesses. Tommy Causey, I know many of you have met Tommy or worked with Tommy. He's our SBA veteran project officer here in Kentucky. And Tommy is a champion for, uh, for veterans, for all small business, but veteran business in particular. And so he is very giving of his time and his uh, expertise. And so I wanted you to have that contact and to know um, how to reach Tommy Causey. And then I mentioned Reggie Ordonez. Reggie is our veteran business outreach center director uh, Reggie is new to this area. Kentucky is covered by a center in Nashville that covers Tennessee and Kentucky. Reggie is a very vital part of our programs and things that we do here in Kentucky. He is involved in our Boots to Business and other uh, programs. So some of you may have met Reggie or hopefully we'll have the opportunity in the future. And then I uh, would be remiss if I didn't include the Kentucky Procurement and Technical Assistance Center. Daryl Henderson is the state director of that program and they provide direct support uh, for contracting, uh, any contracting engagement or individuals that are interested or companies, excuse me, involved in contracting, whether that's federal government or state government. And they have a very dynamic team and, and focus. And um, I would, I encourage you if you are in, interested in contracting or actually involved in contracting that you connect with them and their website and they will have uh, uh, lots to offer as well and things. They have training uh, videos and things on their website as well. One of the things that I will do in our 
uh, communications with you after the fact as we'll include their website information and contact as well. So one of the, the things that I um, had, do not have a slide on but that I want to talk about is really the wealth of support we have here in our local communities. And so I would encourage all of you to reach out to your chambers of commerce, um, to your other organizations, business organizations in Radcliffe. Uh, the Radcliffe Small Business Alliance has been a really um, uh, vibrant and dynamic support to the community there and to the small businesses and as an extension of some of the other things that are available. Um, one of those things is the Kentucky Veteran Business Alliance and Alex Ramirez, who was actually the 2018 Veteran Small Business of the Year here in Kentucky and has been um, honored and recognized for many of the things that he does, decided a few years ago that he wanted to create an organization that would support and enable uh, the growth of veteran businesses. And that's the Kentucky Veteran Business Alliance. And I'll include that as well in our program. And the other program, I mentioned the innovation centers, but here locally, we have Lisa Boone, who is with the Central Kentucky ICC, an extension of Western Kentucky University in Bowling Green. And Lisa has been a, a very involved part of our community and a great resource and partner over the years. And so uh, she is working in the area now uh, with some funding. She's able to come back to the area um, almost full time, if not full time. And so we want to ensure that you have her contact and we'll put that uh, in there as well. And I'm sure I've forgotten um, some folks, um, and I just thought of one, and I'll end with that as my resource partner. I did want to introduce to you, it just came out yesterday as a press release, but the Lincoln Trail Area Development District has is launching a revolving loan program for businesses that are impacted by, um, by, the, uh, by COVID-19. And so you can access that information on their website ltabd.org and we'll include more information and resources about those programs but it's it's an opportunity uh, it's a low interest program that they receive dollars for and it allows individuals who are needing help with working capital assistance to meet those daily business needs uh, to have access to dollars and so that's there as well and again, we've been very fortunate in our area to have programs such as the cities and um, others who've provided funding to enable our small businesses to navigate this, um, this disruption we've had in business. And so with that, I will include some other things as I mentioned and all of that will come out to you uh, afterwards. So that is the end of my presentation this part of my presentation today, I've got a little bit more to share. Um, this is our contact information here in Elizabethtown, but as I've shared the website for the KSBDC, any of you that are not in this particular area or anywhere throughout the state can connect with the SBDC at our website, ksbdc.org. So, one other piece, and this is how we like to end our program every year. Pull that back. One other piece uh, today is we are actually uh, going to share with you um, a success story, not only for um, this community, but statewide and really for the, for the military community. And some of you have heard from Will Rivera before. Uh, Will, is, Will is a local entrepreneur and someone that we met in the SBDC when he was exiting the military um, and retired in 2013. And so Will is really a true example of how risk-taking and personal drive and passion translate uh, to successful business. He's a career Army veteran and he uh, is and was extremely passionate about natural running and health. He had that dream and he wanted to channel that passion into helping others. And he has uh, been able to do that, do that very well. It's one of the, a very successful community um, business here in the Elizabethtown area. He was awarded the 2019 SBA Kentucky Veteran Owned Business of the Year Award. 
and he has also been awarded uh, other accolades as a veteran-owned business. One of those is the Hardin County Veteran Entrepreneur of the Year, and he received a Paysetter Award with the KSVDC. And we were able to not only um, highlight his business, but to showcase Will and the things that he does. If you've not met Will, he is uh, very happy to share his talents and loves the opportunity to work and, and um, talk with other veteran business owners. And so with that, I'm going to end my presentation today with a short video uh, where we'll get to hear from Will Rivera. I've always been passionate about staying fit, helping people achieve goals, and I also love shoes, so I needed something to do retiring from the military. My wife and I decided to uh, open a business. My business is uh, Running Souls. We help you find the best possible footwear to keep you healthy while you're walking, running, or uh, uh, you just want to live a healthier lifestyle. Coming out of the military, I didn't have a clue you know, saying how to get this done. We could not have done this without the uh, Kentucky Small Business Development Center. We've been in business now going on seven years. We cater on three main principles, which is service, uh, the experience, and the product. Our name is actually Running Souls, so uh, basically that's the misconception. We are for everybody, you know what I'm saying? Everybody's feet uh, is going to hurt at one point, so what are you going to do about it? I do a lot of walking. Uh, because of health issues, I need to keep exercising. I'm down to a certain pair of shoes that I can wear. That's what we do here. We help you find the best possible footwear. They put you on a machine to measure the width of your foot, the length of your foot. Your arches, your pressure points, one key aspect which is the sizing. I didn't realize that as you got older, your foot gets a little wider, might get a little longer, so your foot changes. We take that information and fit it into our fitting process. You gotta be fitted correctly. They know their products. Uh, they know what product would be best for you. We try to make sure that the customer is pleased with whatever option they might be looking for, but we're gonna guide them to what the shoe that they need. I believe six pair of shoes uh, here. Uh, my wife has bought her second pair now. If you shop online or if you shop at a big box store, you're not gonna get these type of services. It's just a great place. If your body stays in motion, right, stays you know healthy. And if you do care about your health or your family, you need to take time to come see us. Now I'm hooked. Well, we're glad to be able to share that. One of the uh, things that with the Paysetter Awards that we hold annually is a way for us to recognize those successful businesses throughout Kentucky. And, and one of our uh, uh, things that we share and, and gift the winners is the access to a videographer and then a short video about their business to allow them to have a professional um, video that they can share on their website or with others. And so um, as, as you see, Will is a very dynamic person, and I know that he uh, is someone who's going to be growing and developing our community for a long time. So congratulations again, Will, for all that you've done. Um, so with that, we are going to lead into our closing remarks, and Becky Aitz is the Executive Vice President of Abound Credit Union. She actually started with the credit union 37 years ago, and she was a teller at Fort Knox at first, and, and she has continued that career and served military uh, personnel over her career in all those years. She then moved into the lending arena and where she continued to help military members transition um, to Fort Knox. And she is pleased to say that some of those members still reach out to her to this day. Becky's been a really great part of our program and uh, a champion for small business, and we certainly have uh, had the opportunity and, and the pleasure to work with Becky over these years to ensure that the uh, Veteran to Entrepreneur Program is something that we can bring to our, our area. And so with that, let's hear from uh, Becky. Thank you, Patricia. And thank you, especially to our presenters today. We really appreciate you taking the time to share your experiences with our attendees. And thank you to the attendees who attended. Hopefully 
you were able to gain some insightful information that will help you, whether it's to improve your existing business or to start a new business. Abound is dedicated to supporting our veteran community, and we continue to offer this workshop shop on a And I know Becky was saying she hopes we will be able to meet with you all in person next year. And I know that's something we all want. Um, one of the, the key things is that we want to ensure that uh, everyone is safe and has the opportunity to develop their business and grow. And so keep in mind that all of our resource partners, which you'll be getting contact information for uh, a little bit later, are available to help you. disruption in our workplace and moving forward. So everyone stay safe and thank you again for um, spending time with us today. Thank you.